Okay, so Sebastian, part two. Cheers, my friend. I'm just getting prepared, you know? Yeah, you are. I need to get lubricated with nice wines. So what are, so what are you drinking? Please tell me. I'm, I'm, I'm drinking, I think I, I mentioned this wine to you before. It mm -hmm. has this super funny label. It's from Chopron, yeah. from the wine region of Chopron, which is right next to Austria. And this is a Zenit variety. Mm -hmm. uh, 2016. It's made by Molnar Titi uh, selection. Uh, he said this is an experimental wine. That, that's what he says. Uh, that after fermentation, no sulfites added, stayed on the lease on 500 liter barrels for 15 months. Oh. So uh, it has this beautiful kind of gold color. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to show you. It, it has this kind of super deep. And um, I've, I've had this wine only once before. It's a, it's a quite new wine in the tasting table where I work. And, um, and I re remember we had this crazy night before quarantine started again um, re recently. And we had one last day to do a, like a happy hour thing with Okay. People could come and taste three, three wines, some cheeses almost for free and buy a wine. So it was, it was packed and I was uh, working only with, with one of my colleagues and it was a lot of people. So at the end of the shift, uh, Jessica came, my wife, and we were with my, with my colleagues, good friends, and we opened this wine and it tasted delicious. But I don't know if it was because, you know, end of the day. Uh, relaxation you are so exhausted and you want to have something nice and this wine this is the second time i'm having it and it's actually quite nice and I'm, i've i've sold a lot of this wine because that experience created this image of of a complex balanced easy easy to drink mm -hmm. wine and then uh, i've i've sold i don't know how many cases of this in the shop and uh, it's good that I taste it again. I think that it, that this is the type of wine that benefits uh, from some oxygen. Uh -huh. I just open it. It's actually a screw cup. Uh -huh. So these wines, when they have some age, they, they, they usually need some, some air uh, if they're a screw cup because you know they can have some reduction or they might be some just shy, so not, not opening. Uh -huh. So I will tell you at the end uh, how, how it is. Nice. But uh, how, how did this variety get there? Because it's originating, kind of originating, but it's a made variety. So it's, a, it's an artificial cro crossing, right? Yeah. In, it's, in a, Toka, it's a man-made right? variety. It's a, it's yeah. a crossing. Uh, I think that the same uh, professor who did all the Z starting yeah. grapes, so Zengu, Zeta, Zeta, yeah. Zeta mm -hmm. Zeus, uh, Zenit, Mm. I think that they, they all have more or less one, one of the parents is the same. I'm not sure if it's Bouvier or something like that. Uh -huh. And the other, the other grape is different. I'm not completely sure what Zenit is it's crossed from. I, I think it's Ezerio and something else. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it probably Ezerio and Bouvier or something like that, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. It's a Hungarian crossing. I've, I've seen this uh, grape in a few, very, very few places. So it's not, it's not so, so, so mm -hmm. common. Right? Hmm. Nice. But uh, and what are you drinking? Uh, that's, that should be your guess because uh, I thought that I maybe ask you some Blind questions. That, yeah. And then uh, maybe you should find out. I, I think you like probably can. Game, game I want to play. That's exactly. Uh, I know, I know you, I know you, Dark Soul. So um, I have a more classic variety. It's not a man made okay. one. As white and the white it's young yeah and it has um, some yeah greenish reflexes so it's really bright almost like kind of steely it's a very fresh wine it's 2019 okay. one uh hasn't seen any oak okay and it comes from a okay or i maybe i just describe it and you will tell yeah describe it yeah describe so it has a very mineralic life kind of limey more like lime lime grind or like lisbon lemon so very fresh kind of almost peely kind of white mineral character so very okay. refreshing and wow very really bracing acidity but nice extract 
but it really it's really present it has a, a little bit of residual sugar it, the wine is kind of linear so the, the acidity is really the focal point there and it has more like stone fruit aromas almost on the greeny kind of side and i am in germany okay yeah <laughs> I, will, I mean it sounded almost like a sauvignon blanc until you said residual sugar then it is it should be riesling should yeah. be it is uh, yeah you know should be and and it's uh, i i had a podcast with this guy actually and i, I think you know him and we 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 are talking about this terroir uh, the last time and uh, uh, it's a kind of cool comet also in germany a uh, mosel or what almost yeah a little bit uh, more nahe. East, nahe. a little bit more north not nahe no it's right rango yeah Ranga, but uh, wow. the eastern part it has, it's a künstler. künstler i uh, saw your picture i saw your your your, your picture and i said he yesterday he's right <laughs> he's gonna take this fancy wine um that's nice. a, like a super fancy uh yeah but, but it's, I, but it's, it's not so fancy that, to be honest yeah i mean for a price wise it's like 14 euros or something it's not that because, but it's, it's, because it seems like it's a, it's a single vineyard right it's Erstalage, yeah so it's premier Cru. i mean and uh, i am surprised that it has no oak and it's more into the citrus kind of kind of lemon lime zest uh -huh. because that that is usually not um not something i would uh, think of a single vineyard which is doesn't mean is is bad or good just yeah. maybe some more complexity but it's very young though so it can it, it is be yeah yeah and uh to be honest with it has some uh, if it sees some air it has almost some kind of it's strange nuttiness almost this kind of mandel or something like this you know it's very okay. it's, it's really it, it can develop also it's a hochheimer kirchenstück amstein and it has like a slightly phenolic grip so it's really not that okay you have some electricity and it buzzes your mouse and then it's over but okay. it's even versus the counting i think it's uh, i like the one. the electricity thing yeah i like that too um, it's also, <laughs> also monday morning wine electricity <laughs> and but since we are talking about reds tonight right because you don't yeah, know my it doesn't reds. seem like it but um yeah yeah <laughs> because i also opened a red wine today and i wanted okay. to i wanted to guess it okay uh, but i think it's gonna be hard one so okay. it's not so concentrated than the cabernet from was but okay. you cannot really see it in the webcam but uh, you can you can really see through the wine it has some brownish like almost yeah mm -hmm. like kind of brownish like autumn leaf kind of reflexes you know okay. and uh, you can see through it it has some age but not so much and it has almost some kind of chocolatey smell but more like um, slightly animating but not like this desiccated of um, meaty aromas but some kind of animalistic smell but also okay. some kind of more on the red fruit side so i would say more like on the white red wild red berry but it has some has seen some some heat so that that you can taste okay okay animal slightly brownish okay has seen some age and um but i i will help you it's um volcanic origin oh and it has Where some Edna, come on! Yeah, <laughs> I mean, red volcanic red. It's it's very it's very. I would have I I wouldn't have gone there. I was thinking more like Grenache, uh -huh. uh, Sauvignon, or something like that. Mm. But is it a Nerello Mascherese, but like based, right? Based, yeah, and some Nerello Capucho. So it's like ten percent or okay. something like this, and. Okay. And it has a, you cannot see it to the camera, but it was only um, 18 days of skin contact, so maceration. Okay. So it's still really light, but it has 14.5% alcohol. It's on the northern side of Etna. A northern side, okay. Yeah, and yeah, nice. So because it's still delicate, but it's dangerous, you know, because after after some yeah. glasses, it hits you. So I mean, it's, 
Mediterranean style, you will be singing on top of the tables in a, in a moment or two. After and that's what days. I want in this podcast, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, this is the bottle, actually. Ayunta Navigable. And it's, okay. uh, it's also very interesting. I, I read that it was um, in a mixed cherry and oak barrels. Okay, cherry. Uh, yeah oh. i haven't i haven't heard of that before and they're quite um like high altitude is like uh, i think it was like 600 or something like that okay. so it's really bright acidity so nice nice wine actually yeah nice so but uh if you do you like this game oh yeah i love it uh, I love uh, you are probably better at it than me than what i try to uh, try to describe it i don't have any well, wine I... for you to guess uh so <laughs> I feel I feel bad, but uh, no, no, no. But you, you, you can find out uh, my maybe my red wines for the menu. Oh yeah, because so, I have, huh? Yeah. So yeah, let's let's find out what's your what's going to be your your menu. What what wines are you drinking Christmas time? Nice. So you, we already have the sparkling. So what would you maybe? Do you remember my sparkling yet? Blanc de Noir. Yeah. Blanc de Noir. That that I remember. It's a vintage thirteen. Yeah. Right. I yeah. that 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 I remember. Uh, I don't remember the producer of the re of the re or the region, Rhein, but it's German. Rhein Hessen, yeah. And uh, 24 months of lease aging. Okay, not much. And some barrel uh, fermentation. Barrel, okay. Yeah, so for that I think I I um suggested like some toast baguette, mm -hmm. maybe it's with some warm cheese and True. maybe some, some ham. Uh, yeah, like ham um, or something like that. But would you go maybe for a pig salami or it's out of the question? Salami, sure. I mean, uh, as long as it's not uh, full of paprika uh -huh. or, or full of pepper or heat, uh, mostly like um, a fatty sa salami, like uh, what we are in, here in Hungary where I am, this winter salami style, uh -huh. uh, can probably go well because the acidity of the champagne Of the sparkling wine will probably cut through that fat without because it if it's too spicy then then no then no but if it's not spicy but very meaty and fatty uh -huh. then it can work i think hmm. and maybe i was thinking about some you know some crustaceans so some okay. seafood kind of thing okay with, perfect with some i don't know with some what, what kind of dip would you would you recommend to that I mean, if you have that, uh, I mean, if you go for a Spanish dish, gamba salajillo, which is this uh, shrimps with some, a lot of olive oil, uh, some fresh garlic, and mm -hmm. then uh, just before the, the, the garlic starts getting some color, you, you add some white wine and a bunch of parsley. Okay. And then, and then the whole idea is that it, it should have some some of that whiny uh, liquid left and then what you do is you is you soak your bread you dip your bread in that you let it fill fill with that kind of wine garlic deliciousness some 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 lemon juice as well yeah and then you have it and it's paradise so i i would i would uh, i would i strongly suggest something like that yeah nice nice okay And what would you pair, pair maybe to my Silvaner? Silvaner, wow! Uh, for your Silvaner, uh, it could be something uh, something lean but delicious. So uh, it could be probably a fresh, very fresh cheese, like um, a, uh, you know they sell these kind of spreads of cheese that are very very fresh, like almost like um, like cottage cheese, but not really. Okay. Or, so, or even cottage cheese, and then you can have some zucchini, and mm -hmm. with the potato peeler, you you cut these kind of super thin, long uh, shavings of zucchini. Mm -hmm. uh, hot pan, you just grill them slightly, um, and then uh, what? Else? I'm just making this in my mind. Oh, please, yeah, please. It's not a recipe. It's I'm just uh, I don't know whatever it comes out of that. And then maybe you can you can you can add some nuts, some pine nuts, or or some whatever nuts you have, like 
whatever, walnuts, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, some of that kind of spread cheese and yeah, something like that. Something green, even, I mean, we are off season of asparagus, but that sounds like asparagus, asparagus. Uh, and if you, if you want to have a soup, it could be like a, a vegetable cream soup, something that has um, this white carrot, as okay. we call it in Hungarian, <laughs> this white carrot or, or this parsley root, everything that has this uh, Sunday broth vegetables, uh -huh. so white carrot, karolabe, I don't know what's the name of that yeah. in, in uh -huh. English. Everything that is like green like that and very vegetable deliciousness, any any dish made with celery or celery. Mm -hmm. with, with... Nice. Okay. That's a, that sounds like some vegetarian stream. So vegetarian. Uh, yeah. And since you guys are vegetarian, are, are you vegetarian? No, no, not at all. So that's why I am waiting for the <laughs> red wine suggestions. Okay. But that, but that could be like a vegetarian. This yeah. is, I think that Silvana is absolutely a vegetarian yeah. wine, a uh, dish wine or a white fish, but just barely kind of grilled. Uh -huh. And, um, and so without much. Yeah. True. But I actually, I am surprised that, for example, my girlfriend is, she's kind of vegetarian, so she's not, okay. she's not so strict, but she, she would never eat a fish. But, and, okay. I'm, and that's made me think, actually, that, okay, that you are a vegetarian, but you can still eat an animal. It's kind of funny, exactly. no? Uh, well, fish, uh, well, yeah, fish is at anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's think. funny, but yeah. But some, so you said, like, seasoned vegetables, also zucchini, maybe carrots, bell peppers. Would go very yeah, no? something very so root vegetables. Yeah, I would uh -huh. go for root veg vegetables for sure. Uh, mostly into the white color root vegetables or green okay. color root vegetables. So, for example, um, uh, uh, what's this name? Uh, Cicla. What's what Cicla? I, I I keep forgetting it. Anyway, so um. <laughs> Something with beetroot, 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 beetroot yeah. and carrots and yeah. those things. No, not really. So uh -huh. white or green root yeah. vegetables. And no pickles, right? Uh, well, you know that wines and wine really doesn't like vinegar mm. a bunch. So I don't know. Could be, but I wouldn't suggest yeah. it. Yeah. But I mean, if you like pickles, it's gonna make you feel happy, and that is the whole point of this. So we can <laughs> we can think about oh, this could be good, well, but if you don't like it, uh, yeah. then it's it's not the point. True, and uh, I already have another riesling Hölle. It's also Premier Cuba 2018, so it's a bit maybe slightly warmer uh, characteristics, and also nice, so a bit more south than this uh, beautiful Kinsta one. So, okay. and maybe even, um, maybe even vegetarian dish, but also maybe like a lighter kind of meat would also, um, maybe if you could suggest it, you already mentioned in the first part that maybe white meat. With Riesling, you know, I have, I have this great way to turn a chicken breast into a delicious thing. Uh -huh. So you just marinate it in lemon juice okay. with a hint of mustard. Okay. Uh, so raw chicken breast, you cut it how how you the size you like it. What I suggest is that don't don't leave the whole chicken breast because the mustard will make the chicken get brown very fast. So if if you have a very thick piece of of chicken, then it might get raw in the center because it gets super super brown, almost black in the in the outside uh, because of the mustard. But mm -hmm. if you just you just let it marinate in about for about half an hour, one hour, in this lemon um, kind of mustardy uh, thing, and then you just grill it easily. Uh, it's gonna get a lot of color, so you 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 have to take care that that it doesn't burn. Uh -huh. uh, and then at the at the end, if you wanna emphasize it, you just put a, a bunch of white uh, or or a, not a bunch, only a little bit of white wine. Uh -huh. and uh, and and even some sesame seeds and that in, then it then it looks beautiful and um 
and that and that could be the base for basically anything so you can you can with that you can do a salad for example uh -huh. you can do a salad with with any type of lettuce that you like some bread croutons and maybe a dressing made out of made out of again lemon and uh, and some mayonnaise or whatever you guys like uh, any vegetable or you can use that same uh, chicken and then do like a um, fancy sandwich or something like that with uh -huh. uh, whatever you like so that's a that's an easy way of turning uh, chicken breast into a, a white wine friendly um, like a lean delicious white mm -hmm. wine friendly okay nice so so you would rather like avoid this kind of creamy and well unless unless is unless it's an oaky rich mm -hmm. white okay but if it's a riesling uh, then it doesn't sound like like a creamy like creamy a guy okay yeah. okay so oh, nice thank you very much I, you have the I, I feel like a doctor man i feel like when you, you go are. to a doctor and, oh I, my <laughs> back hurts and the doctor is like you should you should do this uh i feel like that at this moment so uh, that's cr kind of crazy yeah but you know if you are uh, in a restaurant and you have some sometimes i ha also have the feeling that uh, i meet with patients you know mm. they have they have different uh, blood groups and they have different problems but they just they have different like price ranges how yeah. they can handle the problems and you have to find a solution sometimes it's kind yeah. of like that you know Exactly. Because some kind of some people have maybe problems like low self-esteem and they want to show the next table that they have more money than them. So we have uh, to find well, the right yeah. solution. Bring the bring the petrus. Yeah, true. Yeah, well, that's that's your most expensive wine. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so the reds. I have three okay. red wines, and I I try to describe them for you. Okay. Um. So the. Um, the first one is a bit lighter, maybe, and um, I try to come up with questions that you don't find out too early. Uh, it's kind of it can be a really spicy. It's a classic uh, middle middle European variety. It can be a little spicier, but it's more mostly on the red fruit side. So it's not not it's not really tannic, but uh, quite late ripening variety. Um. I think it likes oak. It can bear oak really well, uh, but it's almost always have a. Um, even though the variety is late ripening, it has a slightly refreshing acidity. Um, okay. And it's a classic Middle European variety. It can be really Kadarka. delicate, though. Kadarka, not really. A, a, a bit, a bit higher in a weight class. A bit higher in the weight class, uh, late ripening. Yeah, quite that late is ripening. confusing me. Uh, lighter, well, Saint Laurent or something like that, or so I guess. kind of. Or, or what do we have? Or what do you like in in Hungary? Which is uh, it Kick can Frankfurt? be? Yeah. Okay. Kick Frankosh. I I I didn't know Kick Frankosh is later is late ripening. I didn't know that. Uh, it's kind of late ripening, no? I have no idea. That's a new thing. I have no, no idea. And uh, actually, I have a German one. So do you know the German name for that? Probably? Lemberger. True, of course. Yeah. yeah. And it's not yeah. far from here. So I wanted to have a regional variety. It's called uh, Württemberg. Uh, it's from Mittel, Mittel Rhine, Or where is it from? Württemberg. Württemberg. Yeah, and sure. it's Rem Rems Valley. Okay. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually also a beautiful place and it has a lot of exposure. So you also get a northern exposure, a southern, an eastern. So it's really like it, it has a big emphasis on, on exposures and things like this. And it's actually Lemberger Buntev Mergel. So that's Marl. Okay. And it's from Boyer. It's a biodynamic uh, winner. Wow. A 2017 one. It's a, and it's really <laughs> delicate. To be honest, it's not so spicy. It's a typical because I think Rams Valley wines have this uh, characteristic that it is still very ripe, but it still have a present acidity. Okay, and it's uh, more on the red fruit kind of white berry kind of side, and um, yeah, so you know cake Frankish very well, I think. So 
Okay, Franco's yeah, but but the German version should be super really. light. Should a bit be... lighter, yeah. Twelve point five percent alcohol, not um, solo maceration. Well, uh, that is a very versatile wine most of the time, but there's a point when it stops being versatile. So it's versatile from uh, oily fishes until duck. Uh -huh. uh, so that that also includes poultry, basically any any type of chicken or or whatever turkey. Uh huh. But then, but then uh, even actually even pork pork can be very good. Actually, pork could be an excellent uh, excellent idea for that. Maybe like a good old classic potato based, like uh, some fatty potato, delicious stuff with some pork. I'm just thinking uh, this Hungarian dish that I love and I haven't had in a, in a long time. I'm, I'm, I probably should. Uh, Brasoi, mm -hmm. which is this French fries. And then on top of that is this ragu of pork with pepper and onion. And it's so, so good. And with that, I think this Kick Francois uh, or the Lemberger could, could could go very well, or with a, anything of that kind of sort of um, sort of kind of fatty but not red meat. Yeah. Thing. Okay. And I think just a just a personal question: Did you already have that maybe uh, some kind of Lemberger Blaufrankish Kick Francois tasting, or have something in your mind with what kind of differentiate this? Uh, the Lemberger. Uh, blind tasting, you mean? Kind of. Or did, did you have the opportunity to just taste side by side this kind of cake Francoche, Blau Frankish, or Lemberger? I've I've tasted Blau Frankish and cake Francoche, yeah, but I I don't think I've tasted from Germany yet. So mm. we should do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you should have a few of them in your in your cellar, so that that, that should be good. Yeah, but I don't have a cake Francoche. Oh, that's, that's a problem. No problem. That's, that's a problem. A problem. I have, I have uh, on the tasting table, we have, and we actually, I think that the wine of the year, and this is a thing that I made up. Nobody's asking us, what's the wine of the year of the shop? Nobody in my, in my colleagues, uh, among my colleagues is thinking, what is the wine of the year? This is a thing oh. I made up myself. Uh -huh. yeah, the, the wine of the year of the tasting table it's a cake francoche, I think. It's a wine that we've we've sold a lot, and we we've had that wine open available to taste for a few weeks. And when people try it, they buy it, and it has this beautiful label of this kind of phoenix, or I don't know what what's that like a falcon, whatever uh -huh. it is. It's from the Panorama region which is not one of the main main uh, regions of Hungary. It's a very small in market share kind of uh, wine region. And it's made by the Cherry Winery. I don't know okay. if, if you, if you no. hear it. And the, it's 2017, their 2017 Cake Francoche. And it's an oak version. Uh, it was aged, I think, for a bit less than a year in small barrels. And then it was transferred to bigger barrels for about eight months. And it has this... It's a richer, more concentrated um, version of Cake Franco. So it has that leathery okay. kind of Bordeaux-like mm -hmm. uh, oakiness, but on the palate, it reminds you is Cake Franco because on the palate, it has this kind of classic uh, freshness, uh, crisp acidity. So it's so it's very good. So uh, that wine I would I would bring uh, to our future. Uh, to be, uh, you know, created yes. Lemberger Blau Frankish Kick Frankish. Because I've never been to one. So I wanted to go, but uh, because I think some people organize something like this, but I, I don't remember uh, exactly. But I think it would be interesting because I, I tend to drink a lot of Blau Frankish since I work in, in, in Austria again. And I think it, it's, a, it's a very versatile variety because Namberger can be really a bit more delicate, a bit more fruity, a bit more higher in acidity. So it's, it's yeah. a bit, bit cooler in general. And also in, in Blau, a Blau Frankish in Burgenland, it's also very versatile if it comes from Rust or if yeah. it comes from Mitte Burgenland. But it, it has, 
I, I think it's a, it has a bit more spiciness in general than a cake frankosh I, I had before when I lived in Hungary. But I haven't, yeah. I haven't tasted too much cake frankosh, so that's why I asked you. It's, uh... No, cake, I, and cake, cake frankosh is a, is a very special topic. It's very interesting from a wine geek perspective uh, because Hungarians don't like cake frankosh. Hung, hung, Hungarians think it's, it's like a cheap, like, yeah. oh no, because there's so much cake frankosh. I mean, cake frankosh just... I did a I did an article this year, uh, so not recently, recently, but uh, more or less. Okay. And I, I checked the the Hungarian wine scene in numbers, and uh-huh. the most planted variety in red is by far by knockout is Cape mm-hmm. Franco. So it's like eight thousand hectares uh, <laughs> planted, and then the number two variety red. Is only two thousand hectares planted. So wow. uh, instead of eight thousand, then two thousand, and I think that the second most planted is Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, and Blau Frankish, you know, is the kind of wine that Hungarians have homemade. And if if Cake Frankosh is is not um, like if it's average, is it's it's bad. It's 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 not good. But cake frankosh can be outstanding, can have a lot of depth, a lot of spiciness. Black pepper, I think it's a classic cake frankosh yeah, uh, too. fruit with this sour cherry, crisp, juicy sour cherry, high acidity, juicy acidity, yeah. food friendly, just a spectacular wine, really. Um, mm. But somehow it's super easy to sell. So for a Hungarian winemaker, it's a pain because they know they have this great wine. And they know that when they go for an international market, uh, they want to taste local stuff. They don't want to taste a Merlot or a Cabernet Franc from, or Cabernet Sauvignon from Hungary. I mean, why would somebody buy somebody from Australia want to taste a Cabernet Sauvignon from Hungary yeah. uh, instead of a Blau Frankish? But in the local market, Hungarians prefer international grapes. Uh, so for the winemaker, it's always a thing that 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 he or she has to think about like do i make my wines for an international audience um and basically sell very little wines to hungarians or so cake frankosh i think is the the mo the the symbol of the duality that exists in in Hungarian winemakers in a Hungarian winemakers head like should I make the traditional stuff that we're good mm. at but locals are sick of it like mm. they don't they don't they don't want to have that so but it, yeah. it's funny to hear because some I have a good friend who had in a who were in a podcast I'm proud to call him a friend I think already mm-hmm. uh, Karl um, from the Karl Heidler winery Moritz from Lemberger mm. from Stetten and he said a similar story, story, but with the Lemberger, because Lemberger um, has a bad reputation among the locals, you know, because it's cheap mm-hmm. wine with Trollinger, it's a yeah. bad cheap cuvee with a lot of, you know, it's <clears throat> like uh, watery stuff. And yeah. then he actually has uh, in Germany a wine with the name Blau Frankish. Okay. Because then locals tend to buy it m- more. Exactly, because it's new. Yeah, and it's new, but it's the same, you know. It's but the it's same, really yeah. the power of the name. Probably, I mean, if some Hungarians should, uh, it's probably not not allowed, but they should call their kick Frankosh Lemberger just to just to you yeah. know. But Lemberger, uh, Blau, Blau Frank. I mean, the 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 Austrians are incredible. The the Austrians, they have, if not the world, but the, of the of the neighborhood for sure and they are super proud of their blau frankish that it's so expensive and it's and sometimes um sometimes it's very good so uh, austrian blau frankish can be outstandingly yeah. good but sometimes it's average and uh hungarian cake frankish can be very very beautiful like uh, Chopron uh, has this beautiful Eteki Kuria, which is an, a winer from Etek, but they own some, some vineyards in Chopron they make this premium kick frankos that is delicious, man. It's very good. Uh, then Saint Donat in Tihan, they make mm. this mug mug, which is very nice kick frankos. And then Ritsu in Vilain. So kick, kick frankos can make can be made in all around Hungary. And kick frankos in the world, the country that has the most acreage of kick frankos is Hungary. 
by mm. far, by far. Mm. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, Hungary has 8,000, Austria has something like, like 3,000 hectares, and mm. Germany has, I think, less than a thousand or something. Mm. So it's few, few, very few. Mm, yeah. Nice. But Austrians made it famous, so. Exactly. Cheers so, to them. Cheers to them. <laughs> and um, now I want to go back, uh, on with my list. Okay, I may, please. Because uh, the next one, so I still have two uh, red wines. And the next okay. one is really an authentic uh, or indigenous grape variety to the region where we at um we are in italy okay it, it's also it's really a late rate ripening variety we are in um it's a very legendary wine to be honest so i i don't Barolo. Point, Barolo. almost almost don't don't be Barbaresco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh, we are getting there okay but the grape variety you guessed but and we are in, we are almost in in barbaresco east of barbaresco actually so we are in neve Dange. neve yeah neve oh neve exactly. ah, but neve neve is a sub-region of uh isn't it neve is not a sub-region of barbaresco or Bar it's e east of Barbaresco, exactly. It's a uh, some, okay. but it. But what I'm having, it's a Nebbi, It's it's not a Barbaresco, so it's from Sotimano Lange Nebbiolo. So that's the. Okay. That's so it, it's they didn't uh, use the DOC, the G DOC G Barbaresco designation. Lange Nebbiolo. Oh man, they, you need to they, have something earthy. They saved me some dollars on that. Yeah, you know what's the best deal. Uh, with Lange Produttore di Barbaresco. Have you heard uh -huh. of that winery? Yeah. yeah. Because they don't, they only, so Produttore di Barbaresco, I think it's a, it's a negociant yeah. in the French. So they have a, a lot of uh, produttori, so a lot of production uh, pr producers and they buy in the grapes. And I think they only buy from Barbaresco zone but the, it's called Lange because it usually comes from either uh, younger vines or like not so good vin or something like that. So it's basically a Barbaresco. Yeah, and uh, the yield is sometimes a bit higher. Yeah, but it's so and Lange. The process, yeah. Produttore di Barbaresco, it's maybe among premium, like top of the game wine, it's, it's maybe one of the best value. Wines. I think so too, even yeah. Their, even their, their, their Barbarescos um, are quite, well, I mean, it's not a cheap wine at all. It's like 60 euros, maybe a bottle. But we're, mm. we're, we're talking about, like, if you buy their, their single vineyard um, Barbarescos, then anyway. So with that, go for mushrooms. Go for a mushroom dish, and maybe some truffle oil, just to enhance stuff. It could be a pasta of course ravioli filled with with uh, mushrooms with a tomato and truffle oil sauce or it could be uh, it could be what else i mean when you think about piedmont it's basically truffles and barolo and ferrero and ferraris uh, so <laughs> yeah but uh, so, you know I'm a hung, you know I'm a Hungarian boy. I also uh, I was thinking about some something tomato based, but I was also thinking about Hungarian goulash, like a beef stew kind of thing. Do you think it would go well? Yeah, I mean, but more into the into the beef bourguignon French okay. style so with some with some um, mushrooms, maybe some carrots. Give some give some earthiness to it. So uh -huh. make it an alfoldi or a plain uh, guillage, which has uh, some carrots and some potatoes and some things like that to give some some earthiness to it. Because it actually, I, I think that Barolo and actually Nebbiol. But what's the vintage? Uh, Fifteen. Okay, it's fairly young for what it is. Mm -hmm. And Lange, you know what's Lange, Nebbiolo, it's a super tricky grape. If it's not from Barolo or Barbaresco, then it tastes thin. It tastes super, mm. super thin. It tastes almost like Blaufrankish. 
actually, but with much more tannin. But it's almost basically very same, very similar. But if it's a good producer, Lange, then it should be more similar to Barbaresco. And then, yeah, beef too could, could work, uh, but add some, as I mentioned, some mushrooms and uh -huh. some vegetables. Okay, nice. Because I think if we are in Barolo or even in Barbaresco, I think the butter usage can also be a deciding but, but factor. Uh, are, you, are you having a tasting menu on Christmas or what? Like a homemade six, six seven courses? What, 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 what's happening? Not only at Christmas, I try <laughs> I try to have open always at least two two bottles to be honest every day. Yeah, but 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 like, are you cooking this much or? Um... No, I mean, but I'm I'm trying to cook in advance. Okay. And uh, okay, that's wait. why I'm I'm actually excited what you suggest for the for the third wine because I don't want to I want to some kind of combine what you suggest. So for example, some crustaceous uh, foods or some. F Maybe also some fishes or some um, maresfrichte, so some meat. Okay. Some meat from yeah. the from the sea. Seafood. That is, seafood. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you can also use it. Maybe some uh, appetizers, but also as a main dish with some other kind of combination. You know. Exactly. So I, yeah. I don't want to cook that much, but maybe garnela also with a bit fattier sauces can be made of a good. Um, how uh, main gang main uh, dish, but also some appetizers, which is not so complicated, could go well with the lighter kind of wine. So I try to I try not to cook so much, but it's <laughs> for two people. By the way, I can I can see that 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 you have an empty Benze bottle behind you. Two is that the two. Chenin Blanc? Uh, and uh, and the other one I, is is Austrian, right? Right, and, and it's a it's a riesling actually, and that oh, was riesling. that happened to be there on purpose. Okay, because because this uh, thing wasn't here before. But you yeah, said, I, it's I, a famous I, I but I, it was on purpose. Okay, and that's actually a tamand bottle, Sauvignon Blanc, Kalkun Kreide. That's from uh, and the is that. A Dead uh, glass. It's a broken glass. Okay. Yeah, I, I really like these tamand bottles. Actually, you see, you can always see the map on it. Mark? Okay. Should stay mark. Okay. Zutsteier mark. Yeah. So South Styria. And cool. I have some. You know this. You know probably. You Wait, know. that's Schumler, right? No, but almost. That's out. I actually. That Oh, that's 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 Mosul slate. Come on, that's Should blue slate. Yeah, almost blue slate. It's really black, but some of it I have also from Shomlo, but that's on the other side. And that, to be honest, I don't remember what it is, but it's it's Looks red. Like it's kind of reddish. Calculate. Looks like Tokai, you know. I have a, a few. I I only have a I'm few sure. stones for Tokai. Okay. Why why do we collect stones? We are we are we are weird, man. I don't know, but I, I haven't tried to lick them yet. Of course you have. Yeah, I did. But... Oh, God, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I did in Shomlo. Uh, okay, what's your what's your final wine? So my final wine is actually a blend. And uh, okay, I try to So I wouldn't want you to, to find out that that early. So we are in, in northern part of Spain, that's, that I tell you. And um, it's what I really like about this wine, and it, it has a very peculiar smell, mostly like animal kind of thing. And it's really, the culture is really based what the monks established in the hills and it okay. has some kind of mediterranean influences but it's really in the Rioja. almost and it's okay. in the kind of middle of fucking nowhere and it's, it's a small, almost and it's okay. a really really small region and uh, after phylloxera it almost 
distinguished or uh, from Ribeiro? Are you are, are you having a men mencia or what are you having? Uh, no, we are a bit more on, on the eastern part. So we are in, in the mountains and it's okay. a con country in Spain, so to say. Okay. Oh, so oh, very, uh, very rustic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah absolutely. Rustic. It's uh, so Montano, right? No, so Montano. No. Uh, what's it, what's it called? Garnacha and some so, and it's called uh, Gicorella is the soil. Yeah, Pin exactly. Priorato, Priorato. Priorato. Priorato, exactly. So that's really the Carthusian monks established it in the 12th century, and then it really just went Are you off having this. A, wow. really, yeah, I hope it, it has some nice age on them otherwise not too you're... much 15. okay okay but it's not bad so it's, it's actually... gonna be wild it's gonna be nice and rich yeah i love i love these wines actually i had uh i had the great fortune to to speak with the terroir um, a limit you know them yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's a very it's a beautiful <clears throat> pair of winemakers, I think, and they do also wines in Priorat, but also in Monsant. So the okay. outskirts of Priorat. Yeah, and yeah. I, and it, uh, it has, a, I think Priorat wines are really this rusticity always there. Yeah. If it's kept really low yield and, uh, you know, with the Garnacha and Carignana, you cannot really go wrong. And as you said, it's also slate, but brown slate with Ricorella. Rico so, yeah, it's kind of rustic. So. For that, you, 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 you need, my friend, Hungary or Hungary's most famous food product, Salona. Okay. You need some bacon. You need some fatty bacon to start stuff because have, that, uh, that will give you flavor, intensity, salty, rusticity, smoky deliciousness. I have to send then, you my address. Yeah, sounds <laughs> like a stew wine for me. Like, like... You you can actually pair the same one, the same dish with the Nebbiolo, uh -huh. uh, but then you have to do this crazy stew with this lot of that smoky. With some Erich pista. Erich pista, some 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 yeah some some heat. Not much though, otherwise you're gonna ruin your yeah. fancy ones. Um, but yeah, even even wild meats or or like game mm -hmm. or don't go for the classic mushroom for the champignon mushrooms go ahead and buy whatever weird mushroom is available and uh, and that can actually go very well with that i think okay or maybe some smoked meat or some smoked ham kind oh of yeah smoked meat right? like a smoked meat can go very well like if you want to add some uh some Hungarian tulip or something. Oh. Uh, to, to, yeah, look at that hun Hungarian boy. You say fatty, <laughs> fatty smoke pork, Meat. and yeah. then it's like dream. Yeah, true. But you know what? Thanks. I think because now I can save some some cooking, like you said it. Like I, I think I should make a stew. Yeah. And, right, and it's not too hard, but maybe some smokiness, and then I can try exactly. it out. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I would do a stew with some smoked meat uh -huh. and then add, a, add some vegetables to it, but just yeah, right. let, let it be very savory. And, 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 and you can even dump some, some pickles inside if you want to, if you like pickles, uh, oh. like, a, like a beef stroganoff kind of uh, dish. I don't know if you have that. It's like, that's a stew with, with cream and pickles, but don't put cream in it. Just put pickles and, uh, and it would work. Okay, nice. And what do you say? Because I have some extra, but I, I need to have my assistance. Oh, yeah, but my assistant is not uh, available. Not really yet. But as but, you like. <laughs> but I will bring, uh, maybe I bring the dessert wine and uh, it's one minute. I'm okay, back. sure. Okay, so it's also it's a Hungarian variety, but since we we're gonna talk about dessert wines, I thought I'm gonna bring you something which is really susceptible to to botrytis. Okay. And it's a typical Hungarian variety, and um, I think you also met it with this producer. It's a very particular, very I think one of the smallest, or maybe even the smallest uh, wine region in Hungary. I can uh, I can I can see. I mean, I saw the color of the capsule. It's a Chomblo Ivander wine, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> so which, which variety is it then? 
Do you know it's it? a youth arc. Almost, but it's also it's a, almost it's a child of harsh level, I think. It's booby. Oh, it's cover. Cover. It's cover, exactly. Yeah. I saw it. It's I saw, is, that, is that the sweet one? No, is, is no, that's... it's it's dry. But uh, you know, the funny thing, if we are in Hungary, you cannot see any vintage on the label. <laughs> and I and I I know why, but since we are on the record, I cannot tell you why. Uh, okay. But there is a reason, but it shouldn't be on the record. So uh, next time. Okay, so, please uh, please type it to me. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, but it's a nice wine actually. It's quite. Yeah. It's... It's very vegetal. That 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 True. that wine for me smells like kind of rata rata. <laughs> like aubergine, you know, eggplant mm-hmm. and um, and like grilled vegetables. It's super and it has the salty uh, taste of chamblo, but then it also has the richness, sweetness. It's it's like bittersweet. Yeah, I think. but to be honest, it's quite nit- neutral. Yeah, it's um I like it, but I think it, some botrytis would benefit from that. And he made a sweet wine uh, in 19, and I think in, in this year as well, out okay. of that plot. And do you know the story of that plot of Kabar? Uh, no, I don't, please. The, uh, so Tommy, Kish Tommy, who is the winemaker and owner of Chomliwander, he bought this plot, half a hectare, from this gentleman who wanted to experiment with the Tokai variety. So Kabar was produced because it has a very thin skin. So it gets the botrytis very easily. Uh-huh. And he wanted to to see if, if they can make sweet wines in Shomlo. Okay. So this old gentleman planted this uh, variety, this plot. And then I think that he got sick of it or too old. So he sold it to Tommy. And Tommy is the only one who owns Kabar in the Shomlo hill. So that's the only Kabar existing in the hill and nice. um and now he actually did a sweet wine uh, like the the guy who planted the vineyard wanted to he did one in 19 and and i think this year as i mentioned but i'm not i haven't tasted it but i know it exists nice. so uh, no no idea uh, we should look it up yeah nice thank you mm-hmm. and how is your assistance my assistant is not definitely not available. So um, <laughs> okay, but time. I I will call my assistance if I may. Sure, absolutely. So now we are the fourth of us. So the <laughs> so now if if you just listen to the podcast, please uh, go on YouTube and type in the wine guys. <laughs> Look up the mm-hmm. podcast because now the visual quality I think really developed of course it's much yeah. better right now <laughs> for, sure. for sure we're getting there and we are at sweet wine so um and we have a very particular sweet wines but just don't show him because i i would have oh, some okay. questions because he's actually an expert on, on this topic we already mentioned the uh, uh hungarian variety which is um which is also loud in in tokai right yes kabar kabar yes. yeah right but uh, we are not in Hungary now. But we have okay. both riders. Oh, so it's a rooster Ausbruch. <laughs> wow, that was so easy. You, you would really want to go to sleep, right? <laughs> it's a rooster Ausbruch. It's, it's a rooster Ausbruch, exactly. It's an Erz Triebaumer. Wow. But it's actually a Gerda Muscataler. But you guys had drink it all. I mean, there's, there's barely anything for, for Christmas time. All right, but we have another bottle of downstairs. <laughs> okay, is that a Rooster or is it a Trocken Birnaus Lazy? No, it's not a Trocken it's also a Rooster Okay, but that's a yeah. but that's a, a, a Gerber Muscateller actually. So it's oh, not so a very aromatic. Thing. aromatic. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, kind of, and it's a. You know, as well as I think Gabba Muscatella has the greatest advantage that it has a slightly slower, uh, higher acidity, I would say. <laughs> and uh, maybe a, like the basic wine is also more aromatic, as you said. So mm-hmm. it's, it's like uh, heaven, I would say. <laughs> so how can you live with a guy like this, thinking about <laughs> wine... <laughs> 
instead of bread and eggs, he comes home with a few bottles of sparkling. Yeah, it's true. And first he started to, so we started to drink wine with dinner, then we started to drink wine with lunch. And now he's putting wine into the lunch. So, and then after that, he's telling me, oh, I, I put some uh, white wine into your mushrooms. And I think, okay. <laughs> so the next time would be breakfast, even though we don't have any breakfast. So Yeah, breakfast, like mimosas for breakfast or, or I don't know. So, so the next question would be, what kind of wine would pair well with the coffee? Coffee? Uh, <laughs> Coffee? Oh, come on. Oh, now I get I'm, I'm a bit slow, you know. <laughs> but I, I get it. I get it. He likes to pair wine with everything. I compare wine right. with song. You know, you know that I that I used to be a, a, a teacher in Colombia when we lived in Colombia. I used to teach about wines and about uh, food. And one of my homeworks, if you were in my wine class, Mate, you were one of in my in my wine class. One of my homeworks were I I put two songs, and you had to pair a wine with the song, and that and that was the homework. Really? Oh. Yeah. The first idea. Really? <laughs> and that was the homework. One 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 song was this very melancholic jazz, very slow jazz, like a beautiful song that I love. I can't. I keep forgetting the name. Uh, mm -hmm. But this very slow kind of bluesy like jazz, uh, uh, kind of like rainy day, you know, kind of mood. And then the other song would be like a super happy, random, mm -hmm. like Rihanna disco. <laughs> about which, which, which one? Which one? Well, the good news for okay. everybody is that everybody wins everybody because there's no there's no no rule there's like no good answer but mo mo most of the people for the what would you pair with the rihanna disco song what would you guys pair with that a, a riesling a nice german yeah. riesling riesling is good for anything but i mean let's 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 scratch riesling off so you so it's harder okay <laughs> I would... Actually, nobody said, said Riesling. You are just biased. I, you're... I, I was thinking on a ro rosé. Rosé. Everybody yeah. said rosé. Yeah. Yeah. Sparkling rosé, like what you're having. Mm, yeah. yeah. Mm. Definitely. Like... To put on some uh -huh. Rihanna. Not bad. <laughs> and you know what? I, I would also maybe, but acidity would go bad with some buzzing, right? Then you get into the rhythm. Well, uh, I would go for more fruity, kind of co not complicated. So okay. not the time Maybe to I overestimate open. Rihanna. Yeah, some bubbles <laughs> because bubbles make you tipsy faster, right? Uh, <laughs> some some cava, some rosé, uh -huh. some mirch. Nice. Okay. And, and to Sinatra. The, and to the Sinatra and the melancholic. Something more uh, elegant, elegant. Elegant. Something more. Elegant, yeah. Fancy. <laughs> what would you guys pair? I mean, I am the teacher here. Come on. Right. <laughs> right. Please so, do your homework. Do your homework. So with a with a slowly kind of moody kind of Sinatra song. Yeah, mm -hmm. very like very small, almost the type of song that you would put in a very rainy day. It's rainy, yeah. it's cold. And you open the door and you are wet. So you and then you you have a chimney, okay, a chimney in okay. your your imaginary home, and you turn out the fire, and then you are in your beautiful leather seat, this beautiful chair made out of leather, and then you sit down, low lights, put your put your put your put your legs up, grab your favorite book and a glass of wine. What see wine that. are you drinking? No, see that. great choice. No. Yeah. See that. Great choice. <laughs> yeah. But too, too broad. You need to be more specific. But not now. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> but you definitely need some body, I think, and there's some alcohol and probably some oaky and some age. So I would yeah. go with some leathery nose, maybe what we already talked about, Barbaresco, but like maybe an older Barolo. But I would Actually, if uh, some, if not so popular or not so well-known thing that I think 
what you what Jessica said, it's also a own kind of older road wine would would go well like as well. Mead, uh, okay, could be. Yeah, could be, but also to be honest, I would put maybe like a really bold wine. So maybe even Sorry. like um I don't know, maybe sometimes a tannat after uh, two Napa hours Cabernet. of decanting. Napa Cabernet. Yeah. And what's oh, your Napa choice? Cabernet. My choice? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that much heavy red wines, actually. But it, but it, <laughs> but it doesn't <laughs> red wine. So my choice, I don't like this mm. style that I, that I prefer, that I have in my mind. But at that scenario that we created, uh, I have yes. one wine. I never, I never have. So, uh, but anyway, but I want to hear your wine first. So what came to my mind when it doesn't have to be a red one uh, was this Grillo from Italy mm -hmm. because okay. it's not so high in acidity, but it's- Very nice, yeah. It's, it's more- She does it better than me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking on uh, Oloroso Sherry. Ooh. Like this wine that I mean, a, a, a wine that is more like almost like a whiskey, you know, it's yeah. so uh -huh. it's so unique. And you have a glass because you don't want to drink the bottle. I mean, you, mm. you just want something that is very don't. intense. <laughs> <laughs> and then anyway, yeah. but that was just the homework that we just did. Everybody gets a, a 10 out of 10. Very good. Uh. Very good. <laughs> But as actually some ox do you have any other oxidized wines? Because to, to be honest, I, I really love Fino Sherry, to be honest. I don't like Fino. No? I, Why not? I I think it tastes uh, and it, I'm gonna and people probably hate me for the I, I, I think it tastes like when wine goes bad. That's how it tastes for mm -hmm. me. I have okay. never tasted that. No, but that's what but we you bought have... in Austria. You're not discovering not you didn't like the either. <laughs> <laughs> Behind you guys, there's a Venus Jerez yeah. beautiful picture. So you should yeah, know but, this. Uh, and uh, yeah, but I think that's also a very good topic. I think that just to pair uh, also some uh, fortified wines, because I think also a lot of sherry, but also Amontillado would go very well, or Madeira <laughs> would go very well with food, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, with but this is just like a wine. Any wine can be. Any wine has its own time and space. Like, mm. if we have an Amontillado right now, it wouldn't be good. Like, it it would be too much. But, but you know that, why I asked? Because I want to go to desert. Desert. So dessert. Okay. <laughs> what are What are you guys having for dessert? Yeah, that's the what? question, man. You are the teacher. I had that's the question. Oh fuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I so it that's a it's an rooster Ausbruch, very sweet, mm. very low acidity, very rich mouthfeel, almost syrupy, very sweet stuff. So I I would go for for a one for a for a dessert that is not is not so sweet, like an apple strudel or or something like that, like an a fruit something pie. Something yeah, with nice. thick, you know, nice, yeah. 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 but something fruit based for sure. No caramel, no chocolate. Maybe oh. some some nuts, some kind of gerbo like style or vaguely. Mm -hmm. By the way, we have Bagley. we have a delicious yeah. that we're gonna. I'm I'm gonna have a slice of vaguely after this. <laughs> Jessica, <laughs> what, what is your favorite dessert? What what are you having? For, for what are we having for the I have no idea what are we having on Christmas for this year? We, we didn't decide yet yet uh, uh -huh. my favorite dessert is it's a really hard mm. choice uh, I think I have uh, like my my favorites in Hungary my favorites in Colombia my favorites in Spain <laughs> Everywhere, yeah, yeah I, I I don't have uh, just one favorite what's your Hungarian favorite my hungarian um well apart from um <laughs> 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 uh, del emperador oh um chazar morja chazar morja mm, it's not bad with some um what is, is lekvar is it with jam 
Jam, yeah. Yeah, with jam. Yes. It's mm-hmm. it's like a peasant's dessert. It's very good, but it's it's homemade, delicious. So it's it's oh, it's nothing fancy like you would thought. Like oh I... no, like foie gras with blue cheese. <laughs> and a, <jam>. <laughs> a lot. It's it's really tasty, and there is. I think I just try it my first time. It was in Colombia, uh-huh. and made it and uh yeah i love it but here i don't remember that we try it here uh, no it's funny we ate more of Shame this hunger in colombia yeah <laughs> but i like also turo <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. yeah and really maybe good. with a gunda palacinta or actually so we like chocolate or especially her <laughs> the taste yeah. is really chocolate so what would you pair or we still have some time to to get some other sweet wine. So what what would you pair with some chocolate based dish? So the chocolate, they say that the best wine for chocolate is Rasto, uh, which mm-hmm. is this fortified wine from the Roussillon in France, right in the border, like literally on the border with Spain and France on the Mediterranean. It's a Grenache based red wine uh, made with a lot of oxygen contact. So it has this super developed funky uh toasty caramel toffee uh, uh-huh. there's a lot of alcohol because it's uh fortified so 16 percent or so and they say that is very good or port port also of course yes. uh madeira that is made out of tinta negra mold so not the classic ones but the cheap stuff could actually go very well with uh, but chocolate is very tricky some people like dry red wines with chocolate Jessica yeah, likes it. Me. <laughs> Don't recommend it. But, but um, we dark. Mm-hmm, we should. <laughs> yeah, it's her fault, okay? <laughs> but it, not with any chocolate. It's It, it must dark be chocolate. a really good one and mm. with dark chocolate. Yeah. yeah. Milk chocolate is no. no good for... Some people like actually Syrah or something very rich and concentrated like a Ribera del Duero or something super rich with uh, black chocolate not me though but she mm. she she yeah <laughs> what is nice. your call for for chocolate guys what are you having with chocolate yeah we were actually thinking about like um today we were thinking like a chocolate cake like with different layers you know? so one is like a little d- drier and the next one is maybe a little bit more foam or some kind of creaminess you know like a layer cake oh wow but that sounds super tricky to call. You you guys are incredible. You you have you drink five wines in Christmas. Six. Drink- uh, but that's only the <laughs> plan. But that's only the plan. <laughs> you guys are incredible. It's a very I, fast- I would like to. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> no, that, that sounds very fancy. Do you, do you guys sell, sell sell tickets to go to your <laughs> to your Christmas party? We will. We will. It's we will not a bad idea. It. We will buy a ticket. It sounds delicious. Six wines, <laughs> degustation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know that's as I said, that's only the plan. And we also have a like um, like an emergency plan. We we opened it yesterday. Do we? Yeah, do we? <laughs> <laughs> we like a frozen pizza. No, like we like um, we opened it yesterday. It's a schnapps in 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 uh, German. Palinka, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, palinka, but it's actually made uh, in Austria. It's uh, it's aged in yeah. for three years in in oak barrels. It's like a walnut uh, liquor, oh. a walnut uh, schnapps. Okay. We tried it yesterday, yeah. and it's dark like shit. Will do palinka? Yeah, no, we don't have a palinka. But I, I already told you that I should send you my dress, so you can send me some salona and palinka. <laughs> <laughs> The Colombian guy will send me some salona. That's a shame. No? <laughs> I can, I can, I can hook you up with Hungarian products. Please, not <laughs> Hungarian, Hungarian products. Yeah. But, but, but Jessica, is it because we? I haven't asked him how how is it to live to live with him. So I think you get I get an honest answer if I ask you. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it's not. 
it's very interesting because every day could be uh, like new or he sometimes he has some nice stories to tell it's it's fun it's uh, uh different for me because i my profession i am a lawyer uh-huh and uh so my my day by day it, it could be very different from sebastian's uh every day so you have to stay sober right yeah <laughs> <laughs> not me it depends <laughs> so yeah actually we we met in a wine tasting in colombia uh so i was all i i have this love for wine also but not like sebastian he's very professional and he is always reading and writing and very interesting on on a professional level let's say so he's always sharing some interesting tips and things um yeah so it, it's it's very nice actually uh the tricky part could be when he is he loves to to be in contest and in these uh certi international certifications so this could be a bit tricky and stressful because he is like um trying to achieve the goal uh, to get the certificate or to achieve the contest mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so this this part could be a little bit uh stressful but uh, yeah i think you can manage it you know like you you know how to deal with that is not uh, it's not impossible it's not horrible Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you you just need to get used to. And it's a and different... you can you know you ladies have to drink a lot of wine. <laughs> you have to. Sad story. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I like it a lot because we have a lot of fun. Wow. We have dinners. We like to try new food. We like to to try new new things. And you have yeah. to try all the wine I bring home. <laughs> yeah, he, like, he has a lot of bottle. wine right now, you know? What are, what are we... Another one. <laughs> yeah, we always have wine. <laughs> That's nice, also. So, I cannot complain. Yeah, it's I have, it's good I have to a hear. question for you guys. What's your top bottle of wine of this year? Of this year? What's that one that... not Maybe not because it was the, the, the best, mm -hmm. but the first one that came to your mind when I just asked this question. So a bottle that you enjoyed this year that for some reason you remember that was good. Not necessarily the best. Hmm. Hard question. It's the, the first time <laughs> that comes to my mind, it, it, we opened it one week or two, two weeks ago. It was also a pre-order, but 2018, really, yeah. a really fresh one. And she, she had like a shizzles, you know? Oh, okay. goosebumps. And, uh, but she, when I first met her, she didn't like any red wine. So, or I, that was really the. I haven't drank that much. Yeah, true. Quality wine before yeah. I met Mati. And <laughs> I still know when, when we were drinking wine together and he started to talk about oh the taste is like so strawberries and i i was like did i miss something <laughs> isn't it out of grape or not? <laughs> my wine like yeah but that is a song like that we can we should also do, do you know this i think uh the, from the daughter of Sinatra, Sinatra, yeah, yeah she has a song that is really? strawberry wine or something like this um, mm. <laughs> but it's yeah that was one and if you would have asked us about the last year, so 2019, I would have said it's a Zeus, but oh, yeah. uh, it's also with a Z, but you, but you drink now. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was the first wine I bought for both of us, or for, for us from Sassi, actually. Ah, Sassi Zeus, sweet. That, that it, was, be together. it was dry. Yeah, but it was dry <laughs> because the, the grapes were really young. But they, they don't produce any dry ones anymore. So it was 2012, I think, the vintage on it. Or... Yeah. And we still have the still have one bottle in the cellar, but that's our wedding wine. So. Oh wow. wow. Because that's yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said when, when she fell in love with wine. So. And not maybe... with me, like with oh, wines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you? 
What about your wine? For me, it's the orange wine we tried in, in oh, I think he was there. Yeah. Oh, with Ben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really like that ah, wine. wine. Really interesting and different for me. I think it was the cake nearly or what was I don't know. Mm, but we haven't had that. Well, okay. I remember the, the You guys you guys left early. Ah, okay. From, from oh. Benson, remember? Yeah. Uh, so that 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 day we had a nice uh, well we have several Benson wines delicious. Yeah, but remember the, the I remember the label. I was he thinking made it. of a of a Benze wine, but that day he he gave us a Pinot Noir, Atlas. We also had it, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, and I I opened it on my birthday, uh, on April, year, and it was quarantine, and uh, and Jessica did this video with all my friends, yeah. and uh, and we were having that wine, so that is that is that is a for sure top. top you also had a beautiful Chenin Blanc from. From Benzer, right? Yeah. The, in the last quarantine. Yeah. I haven't tasted. I haven't tasted his Shannon. Oh, I, well, I tasted them when when I interviewed him, but uh, not since then. No, oh, but that was beautiful. It's like lower alcohol, but it was it was really a natural one. You could you know you could feel that this one is alive and okay, yeah. uh, beautiful. But uh, do you? But the, uh, Jessica, is is your palate also like evolving with this kind of thing, or do you have like a certain taste and that it's kind of taste it stays like that? So after maybe you move to Hungary, it, it developed or? Yeah, it's interesting because uh, you you just mentioned that uh, you didn't like uh, red wines too much, uh -huh. but but then you you start like learning more. So for me, it was the opposite. I uh -huh. am a red wine person. Definitely, but here in Hungary, uh, I'm happy because now I, I learn how to appreciate more the white wines. And I tried so many different things that we, like different than we tried in Colombia because we are more influenced by Chile, Argentina, mm -hmm. um, maybe United States, but uh, I never tried like Hungarian wines, uh, like, with, with this uh, unique and interesting notes. So now I, I love also white wine and this is like a new thing for me. I like whites more than red personally. Yeah. So um, now I'm too yeah, because so I bring too many. Definitely. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I'm happy because now I can pair also white and sometimes I even in the mood to drink white wines. And in the past, it, it was not possible. It was always red for me. Mm. <laughs> I still love it, but uh, now I have more options. And I, now I more know about Hungary. Uh -huh. I, I know more about Hungary, yeah. The best postcard, yeah. And, but I... Uh... I think that's interesting what you said because now when I grew up kind of in Hungary, you know, in the southern part of Hungary, we, we always drank red wine and uh, most of the white wines like Ola Sriesling and uh, I don't know, it, it was either Cersegi Fuseresh or Ola Sriesling to be honest and uh, Ola Sriesling was really neutral and Cersegi Fuseresh was too light and too, okay. too simple. And then I went to study in... Uh, in Austria, and I learned to like white wine, not only mm. Brunner Vetlina, but also the Smaragds from from Wachau. Yeah. And you know, you learn that okay, white wine can really have this higher extract and really aromatic and really high raco, but still elegant. And I think white wine in general has some kind of I don't know more more magic to it, a more it, it, like a broader kind of aromatic profile because it can really reflect botrytis also and also the late ripening and also some residual sugar would go well with some varieties. I think reds are actually more. Uh, actually, no, you're probably right. Yeah, whites are can be more diverse, but reds can have much more flavor change, uh, if that makes Could sense. Be, yeah. so, so the reds can be drastically different in the, in the, in the taste, uh, drastically, while the whites can be very different in the nose. Anyways, both wines are delicious. 
mostly on the same glass. That's how I like them to make rosé. <laughs> that's how like, rosé is made, yeah. One yeah, of the biggest that's, secrets of the world. That's how rosé. Isn't that how rosé is made? Um, yeah, <laughs> and that's you know, Bernard, that had a really great point that um, when we with the sweet wines, when we met um, you. Well, maybe you start the story. So I know. drank some wines. They were not sweet, but they were not that dry as well. But I drank in the past. And um, when I tried, when Mate bought this bottle, this sweet wine, I thought, oh, no, I don't want to drink sweet wine because I, I had this memory that sweet wine is not that good because it wasn't of a good quality. And okay. I think... Um, in sweet wines, you really realize that it is, is it a quality wine or is it not a quality wine? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, because sweetness can be natural, like in that fancy bottle mm -hmm. you guys are sipping, or it can be like uh, influentially produced. Like, Put a sugar bag in it, yeah. Or just stop fermentation yeah, or whatever. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, by the way, the, the, and it's not, I mean, the, the most popular wine style sold in Hungary is semi-sweet red, which is like the, the example of a horrible wine. Uh, but that's the, truth. that's the truth. People like red wines, but people don't like astringency. So people like sweet, kind of easygoing. And that's no bad. I mean, that actually doesn't mean that if you like that type of wine, you are you are bad or at all. But anyway, that's how. But those are very cheap stuff, so those are not going to be complex. And that maybe just means that you haven't drank a really good wine before, because when you but did, yeah. then then you can. Yeah. I mean, it's like beers. When we when you have a beer, like cheap one, you think that all beers are the same, like bitter and like yeah without any aromas but then you realize that that's only like that because it's a, it's the cheap stuff um but anyway <laughs> mate i wish you a lot a lot of success with that the degustation <laughs> man <laughs> we are awaiting for the picture for you to upload it to the wine ghosts so right. we can see all the ghosts going from your bottles on but, uh, Christmas. But I think, to be honest, uh, thank you for, for your suggestions, but I will get enough calories from the wine, so maybe I'm not cooking anything just to... Exactly. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> you know? <laughs> my, my popcorn and frozen pizza with right? the bio and all the fancy and stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, you have great company. I will have great company. Right. And, the other stuff wine is but, there yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but uh, the, you also said that you're not gonna cook too much right i don't plan to cook at all but okay. our our dinner will be very colombian south america traditional mm -hmm. yeah what is that insects no <laughs> <laughs> cocaine yeah. and <laughs> cocaine as an appetizer cocaine <laughs> cocaine dusted cake <laughs> no it's basically uh, insects insect. actually we, we eat ants in jessica yeah i'm not i'm not joking jessica what's that jessica, ants. Jessica, ants. <laughs> <laughs> Big ass ants. That's the name. Big ass yeah, ants. Yeah, yeah. Because it's they have a, a big special. ass, and you eat <laughs> the ass of the ant. It's a, it's a special variety. Yeah. They are. In... I heard of that. That sounds very expensive. Yeah. It, it's gonna be instead of sea bones in restaurants. I heard. Exactly. Big <laughs> ass <laughs> ants. No, we're 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 gonna have this uh, Colombian Venezuelan dish, which is. Uh, a, a corn uh, dough mm -hmm. wrapped in plantain leaves mm -hmm. and uh, stuffed with some meats called tamales. This is an influence from the indigenous, basically. It's a uh, traditional. Very, stuff. very traditional. And we have different names for that. And uh, so we are not going to, to make it here because it's very... It's, it is not a thing that you make at home. It's super complicated, you, so you buy it. You can make it, but... 
it's a lot of work. It's so, like it's like salted capusta. You, if you are not cooking for ten, you buy you buy. It. Yeah, you need yeah. to make like twenty, thirty, fifty. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's huge. So uh, we have a friend. She's from Venezuela, and they have something similar. So we we just bought from them this uh, ayaca or tamal. Is the tamal. Name. Yeah. Maybe we yeah. should do the same. Hmm? <laughs> 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 with your champagne Just and order some. Yeah, if you order now, is it arriving till th Christmas or? <laughs> <laughs> if you order it now, is it arrive? Does it arrive oh, yeah. from, from Budapest yeah. to Christmas? Ah, uh, well, it's made here by yeah. by Venezuelans, so yeah, it's yeah, easier. Yeah. It's easier. <laughs> Actually, this wine. Will be good with this the, one will be good with our dinner. This whole podcast is an excuse to show you the wine we are drinking with our tamales, oh. right? <laughs> and you know what it what is? What is that? It's a it's a it's a petush. It's a Turo Rudy flavored. <laughs> no. I it did is. Uh, today this is table. a Hungarian joke. If you are not Hungarian, uh, you probably you don't understand. This is a uh, Zenit from Chopron. And uh, yeah, 2016. It's it's nice. It has some some oak, toasty, but not much. But a little bit of uh... least aging, <laughs> least stronger grapefruit. Grapefruit. Some kind of like honeysuckle. Cool. Mm -hmm. I like these wines with this. Uh, uh, I don't know the sour note, like from the grapefruit. It's not oh, okay, sour. Bitter. It's bitter. Yeah. Okay, bitter. I like this bitterness. Yeah. You like it? Yes, but okay. uh, it but depends. Subtle. I mean, balance, you know, because uh -huh. there are some beers that are very bitter and I don't like. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I but, have a, a great uh, dessert <laughs> recipe for you. I always uh, eat a red grapefruit with cinnamon and cottage cheese and I mix it. It's, yeah. really, it's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> But, and it's kind of disgusting, but it's great. That <laughs> sounds it's, it's, like I think I don't want to eat. <laughs> grapefruit, grapefruit, and and cottage cheese with wow. cinnamon. Wow. With, <laughs> that that sounds like the cottage cheese is gonna taste like it's gone but bad. But how do you make this? I. I grow. Did you just? Well, how do you make this? Well, <laughs> I just usually cut the, the, the grapefruit and put the cabbage cheese and the cinnamon. It's nothing, nothing fancy. It's like a two-minute dessert. I eat it every day. To but it's like much cinnamon. It's, it's a lot it's... of cinnamons because, you know, cinnamon, as, as you know already, you know, it, it, it really enhances sweetness, cinnamon. Yeah. And mm -hmm. grapefruit, it's really astringent and really some kind of bitter notes, but it's also really healthy. And the, the cottage cheese gives it some creaminess. So it's not like it, it doesn't get your mouth out is, of this place. Is no but, sugar there. but you, so you balance the. That's not everything. a dessert. That is like. <laughs> right. it, you know it's, it's a soccer here. dessert, I know. But. <laughs> yeah, it's like sugar free, horrible stuff. It, <laughs> I cannot. It should, be, it should be delicious. Next time we can have it. Yeah, true. And maybe next time we're going to pair. Uh, some wines to your favorite songs yes let's do a song and wine pairing <laughs> <laughs> but it should be then you know spanish songs with hungarian wines or you know what would be more funny Sp spanish song with german wines spanish song with german wines <laughs> that is like the same basically yeah it's, <laughs> what what is impossible there yeah? <laughs> okay mate well Wish you all the best with your Christmas menu. Please Thank send us pictures. Thank you. We try. <laughs> we try. Laying on the floor after the first, <laughs> <Bottle. laughs> first, first night. <laughs> try to cook something, but we opened every bottle. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank you very much for the suggestions, and I wish you a beautiful evening. Thanks, thanks for the great company. Thank you. Thank you. Both of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Ciao. Bye. <laughs>